So welcome to another Feature Friday. This is part four, looking at the Maximo application framework. Uh, we're gonna add a couple of fields to the mobile application. Again, some pretty simple stuff, um, but to give you an idea of uh, what you need to do and some of the pieces you need to have in place uh, in order to do that. So let's get going. Okay, so let's make a couple simple changes to the application. Um, we're gonna open up the original tech mobile application. This is our foundation. This is the one that we wish to make changes to. And I've already got the preview open here. And so what I'd like to do is um, I want to add an indication of whether this uh, asset is uh, running or not uh, here near the asset information. Um, and then I'd also like to add a, a field here uh, right smack in the middle of the screen. Not that you would actually do that, but it's a good example of kind of how these screens are laid out. So let's get right to that. All right, so let's jump away from the default application and let's go back to our copy of the application that we are working with. And the change that I'd like to make um, is actually not in the app.xml file. It is actually going to be in the WOCARD uh, group. Okay, that describes the uh, um, work order on the on the main screen there. Okay, so if we roll on down through this card group, we see that there are different slots in the application that are defined. And what I've done here is in slot six, there is the asset description that is the state that's been defined uh, elsewhere in the XML file that I can use for um, you know that particular field. And what I've done is I've added text here called is running with a question mark and, and a space, of course. And then I've taken advantage of an attribute um, within this line called a sublabel. And I can introduce another field uh, as that sublabel. There's a, a, a state that's defined asset is running. And that returns to me a true or false uh, value. So I'll be able to see if this asset is running at the moment um, in the context of that particular work order. Then, of course, I wanted to add a field right smack in the middle of the screen. And so in the default application, there is a slot 6 and a slot 8 that are defined. So I just went ahead and uh, introduced a slot 7. Uh, right here in between the two. I just copy pasted the uh, the text here. Here's slot seven. I made the change. And what I'm putting in there is a field. It's a health field that's on the asset record. So if you're using application suite, you go into manage um, and go to an asset record, you will find a field that is simply titled health. And the data that's in there is coming from the application suite health uh, component. Um, in the mobile application, a health is defined as a state that is uh, available uh, coming from the, uh, the managed system. So I simply uh, introduced a slot 7 here, and I pointed the field that I wish to have on the screen. That is its label, and I went from there. So at this point, I would simply uh, save this XML file and then publish it. And then let me show you what the end result looks like. Okay, so now I just opened up the preview of the application. And you can see once I have records uh, rendered here on the screen, uh, you will notice that I now have a is running and true statement here uh, next to the uh, asset description. And also right smack here in the middle of the screen, I have a number called 93, right? Well, that's the value that is in that health field on this particular asset uh, record. So um, just a couple of simple ways of, um, of adding information to the screen, uh, given that the fields uh, are states actually defined uh, in the application definition itself. Okay, and one final thing to point out is the source of these fields. So You'll notice over here on the left-hand side when you get past the properties and the states and such that there are data sources, okay? So these data sources um, are your source of data. 
these are the uh, queries that are going to be executed um, against the object structures, um, the underlying object structures. So here are the very first one that I'm pointing to. Uh, obviously, it's pointing at the MX API synonym domain object structure. And when this is executed, it's actually running this query that is on that object structure. And as you roll down, you will see you know, many examples of that. The main point is that these attributes that are coming back, uh, these are your sources of uh, sources of data that you would then be able to, um, you know, perhaps use for additional fields and such within the application. Uh, if the attribute you're looking for is not listed here or is not part of the object structure, then you will have to add it to the underlying object structure as well as adding it. Uh, as an attribute here within the application. So you may have to do some foundational work before you're able to actually add you know, fields and additional information in the application itself. Yes, actually adding other fields and other information to the application can be a lot more complicated than what I just showed you. Um, depending on what you're trying to do will just depend on all the uh, foundation that you'll have to have in place with those object structures and such, and then certainly the definition of the states and the, uh, and the attributes within the mobile app. Uh, then, of course, it's the understanding of where you can place those fields in the different slots, the different sections of the application, and that'll just take you some time and some trial and error to figure out exactly and the best way to, to do that. So anyway, hopefully if this was helpful, get you started, and uh, enjoy your weekend.